Vietnam has made little headway in cutting its reliance on coal to achieve net zero carbon emissions since it pledged to do so last year. While the country has the region's largest installed capacity for solar and wind power, these renewables account for as little as 4% of its energy usage. Tengo has more. This used to be the church of Suong Dien village in northern Vietnam. It was the heart of the once thriving fishing community. But now, it's surrounded by only the rising sea waters. The walls of the church survived as the people built concrete embankments to preserve remnants of the village past. They themselves were forced to relocate to a new village further inland a kilometer away. Vietnam produces less than 1% of global greenhouse gases, but the country is one of the most vulnerable to climate change. This, coupled with an economic impetus, is driving authorities to act. Vietnam drives a lot of uh, its economic growth now from uh, its experts. There is a risk that some of the industries where Vietnam is so competitive today uh, will put more pressure on production countries to be uh, more respectful of the net zero commitment. Right? So there is also a risk that if we don't transition, the financing will dry out or some global market would, would close out to Vietnam. Vietnam's energy intensive industries will need to shift away from coal towards cleaner power sources to meet its target of net zero carbon emissions by 2050. More than 70% of the country's emissions come from the power sector. But winning itself off coal is easier said than done. Thực tế cái mục tiêu cam kết tại COP26 thì Việt Nam đang đứng trước những thách thức rất lớn, vừa phải tăng mạnh về quy mô nguồn và lưới điện, vừa phải chuyển đổi mạnh nguồn điện từ nhiên liệu hóa thạch sang nhiên liệu sạch hơn, phát triển nhanh các cái nguồn năng lượng tái tạo, vừa phải có chính sách để gia thành điện năng phù hợp với năng lực trình độ phát triển của nền kinh tế. This solar farm in Vietnam's central Ninh Thuận province is one of the Southeast Asia's biggest. The 450 megawatt project is one of many that sprouted up in recent years as the government dished out generous incentives. But as much as 40% of its capacity goes to waste due to the lack of a pricing mechanism to sell the energy. Cái mà hiện nay đang khó khăn với các cái doanh nghiệp về tư nhân đó làm sao cho được là cái, cái hướng dẫn thể chế hóa về luật những cái cơ chế để cho những cái doanh nghiệp tư nhân họ, họ phát triển họ đi cho đúng hướng ví dụ như chẳng hạn như nói về năng lượng tái tạo sắp tới không có không có một cái giá phí hoặc là không có một cái bao tiêu sản lượng Infrastructural constraints like the limited capacity of the national grid are another hurdle to making the switch. The grid was a bit outdated to, to manage such a big uh, influx of distributed energy. So I think the concern to resolve now is more on that. Vietnam is seeking funding of up to 14 billion US dollars a year to develop new power plants and expand its grid. But the current gridlock has raised questions as to whether there's sufficient political will to push through changes and open up the tightly controlled energy market. It remains to be seen if a financing deal for Vietnam can be sealed at the climate talks in Egypt. This will prove crucial to cutting emissions and could play a role in deciding the fate of villagers living near beaches like this, who fear they may be relocated again as the sea level 
continues to rise. Tung Ngo, CNA, Hanoi.